as we wait in silence, fill us with your Spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your Spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your Spirit. Once upon a time, there was a great wind, a mighty life-giving energy that breathed everything into existence, a power that moved along the waters of the deep, the Spirit of God. One day, a group who loved God was praying and meeting, celebrating a Jewish feast with friends and family, unaware of what was going to happen. Heaven was about to pay a visit. A violent wind filled the room where they prayed. Tongues of fire descended, separated, and rested on each of them. The Spirit of God didn't just come near them, the Spirit filled them. And each one began to speak in a foreign language, the many languages of all the people who lived in Jerusalem. All those who passed by marveled at what they saw. How could it be that each one could hear their own native language at the same time? Some claimed it was miraculous. Others scoffed and called them drunk. But Peter stepped forward and boldly proclaimed the truth. What the scripture described long ago had now come to pass right before their eyes. I will pour out my spirit, the Lord told his people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Here was the moment. The power of God filled the faithful. The body of Christ rose up, alive and active, equipped and empowered to love God, to love others. The good news continues to be proclaimed. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the best news is, for those who believe, the story never ends. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. 
and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so I invite you to stand as we come and declare our faith in God. And so together we declare Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. Let us sit or kneel as we continue in prayer. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have our readings. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at that, this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are they all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, 
and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and all the parts of Lib Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, then chapter 16, verses 4 to 15. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom will I send to you from the Father? The Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes... He will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness, righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see no, me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of the world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. 
He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, come by your Spirit and fill this place. Come by your Spirit and open our hearts to you. Come by your Spirit and open our lives to you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us this day. We all do it. Generally, we don't even give it a second thought. Day after day, night after night, we take it for granted, as if it's our right, rather than a gift to us. That is until we find ourselves fighting for it. Then, well, then, it's a different matter. Then we are reminded again how fragile we truly are and how breath is life. We are told that the Spirit hovered over the waters of chaos at creation. The living breath of God Moving, swirling, creating, transforming. The same breath God breathes into us, giving us life. And yet so often we don't give it a second thought. Day after day. Night after night, we take it for granted as if it's our right rather than a gift to us. That is, of course, until we ourselves are fighting for it. Days have passed since Jesus' ascension. The disciples have returned to Jerusalem just as Jesus told them to. But life was different now that he was gone. At times it felt they were drowning in the waters of chaos, uncertain of what was to become of them, fearful of every approaching footstep nearing the door, of the unfamiliar faces filling the streets as the festival approached. For it wasn't too long ago when the same streets had been filled with Jews from every nation and that they had gathered in a different room, in an upper room. But there was comfort now in coming together, waiting, seeking, hoping, praying, Remembering the life that they had had with Jesus. Every breath he took. Every word spoken lingered in their minds. It is to your advantage that I go away. 
when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will glorify me. The noise was deafening. Swirling among them, creating, transforming tongues of fire with with rested on each of them. God breathed and the Spirit brought new life. God didn't just come among them that day. No, God came into them, filling them with the living breath of life. The power of God filled the faithful. And the body of Christ rose up, alive and active, equipped and empowered to love God and to love others. We all do it, though, don't we? I mean, not give it a second thought. Day after day, night after night, I know I take it for granted, as if it's my right, rather than the gift, the breath of God active in my life. We can all read the accounts of that first Pentecost. And we can easily say, well, that was then, and it's not for now. We can look on with awe and wonder and convince ourselves that we are satisfied when God comes among us. Yet I believe if we are truthful, that there is a hunger deep in all of us, longing to be filled with the presence of God. We don't just want God to come among us. We want God to fill us. To have the life-giving spirit Swirling, creating, transforming the chaotic waters of our lives. Bringing to us life in all its fullness. With every breath. And it is then that we, as the body of Christ, rise up. Alive and active equipped and empowered to love God and to love others, to be the church, loving God about people for you. And as we do so, we join in through all those who have gone before us. For this is a story that never ends. For God continues to move among us and to fill us. So on this day of Pentecost, I invite us to wait upon God, expectant, not only for God to come among us, but to fill us. So I encourage us all to open ourselves up to the swirling, creating, transforming power of the Spirit and to receive the gift of the breath of God afresh into our lives.
let us stand together. And let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from who every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated or kneel as we come to our time of intercessions. For our time of prayer this morning, we are going to give space for the Holy Spirit to minister to us. As the disciples gather together, so do we. Unfortunately, we can't all physically gather, but as a church, we are one, wherever we may be. So Father God, we ask you to come. Come in this place and be present with us. As strong as the mighty wind, we pray you blow away any burdens which are hindering us from being with you. Any shame, fear, illness, grief, or worry. Would your presence be a comfort and healer? Like at the beginning of creation, when your breath brought us to life, we pray for more. We pray for your breath to reignite our love for you and for your creation and for your people. Lord, come. For some, we are desperate for the hurricane of your presence. For others, we would love the still, calm voice. Lord, you know our needs and we welcome you here. And let us be still in God's presence. Let us seek his voice. Some will find this easy to do, but it's okay if all you can think about is what you would like for lunch. Let's praise God for the food and for his provision. Because God loves us and wants to connect with us. So let's spend some time with him. Holy Spirit, you equip your church and our hands are stretched out waiting to receive your gifts in order that we can serve you out of abundant love. God has created us all in his image 
but all are unique. He loves to give. He has a generous heart. So ask him, what gift would you like to be equipped with? Is it prophecy? Is it dreams? Is it tongues or interpretation? Is it healing, teaching, leadership, service, or any of the other hundred gifts that there are? Let's pray for them, ask God for them, and most importantly, test them out. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we can always gather, that we can always be with your presence. Amen. Let us stand together again. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us give each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you all back at home. During this next song, the stewards will come around and prepare us for communion. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. And now we give you thanks because he breathed upon his disciples the power of your Spirit to proclaim the good news to all the peoples. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life. 
that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the blood of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord with your whole church throughout the world. We offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. We dwell in him, and he in us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his needs among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvellous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ.
faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. And as you have fed us with the one bread of heaven, so make us one in heart and mind in Jesus Christ our Lord. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. God poured out his promised Holy Spirit in tongues of flame on the day of Pentecost. Amen. You have been baptized with the Spirit and with fire. Amen. May that same Holy Spirit send you out to tell his story and give you a voice to glorify God before all people. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my Pure
is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. <laughs>